Kind of like being in charge of a Rotary Club. You have to be willing to not know what's going to happen. You have to be particularly interested in this theory if you're going to change anything in your club. How many of you would like to change something in your club next year? I would hope so. I mean, how many president-elects actually get the chance to do president-elect training and then they get to gear up for this thing and then the first day is opening speech to the clubs, they say, we're going to keep everything exactly the same. <laughs> Thanks for electing me to be president. You know, it's not the kind of thing somebody says. You're going to change something, right? And so while I'm still on the chair, let me give you a couple of things to change. You got a pen? Write these down. A couple of things to change. First thing you got to change is your profile within the club. You got to be, start being seen in the club. Part of the problem of becoming a president of a club you belong to now for five or six or six years, five or six months, <laughs> is, that, is that the club never thought of you as president until now. They have to rethink the whole thing, this whole concept that you're in charge. And you have to help them understand that you are now presidential. That's not an easy thing to do. People at work do this all the time. They're holding a position for a long time, then they get promoted. And now they're in charge of the people they used to work with. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. That is not an easy thing to overcome sometimes. I know. So I want you to stand up taller, literally and figuratively. I want you to have more of a presence in your club. I want you to start acting like you're president of the club. I want you to start acting like you own the place. I want you to start acting like you have the key to the kingdom because you do for the next year you do and when you act like a president guess how people will start treating you like a president second thing I want you to write down not only raising your profile physically but also virtually you have to start using the internet ladies and gentlemen if you're not using the internet yet let me give you a little tip it's gonna be around for a while You remember when we had rotary telephones and everybody said, I don't need one of those push button devices. <laughs> remember that? I remember when cell phone comes out and some of you in this room said, I don't need a cell phone. And then some of you said, I, well, I'm going to get one, but I'm only going to use it for emergencies. Remember that? I know who you are. And there's people in this room today that say, I don't need to be on Facebook. Guess what? If you're going to be club president, you need to be on Facebook. I'm not even giving you a choice. I know what you're going to say to me. I'm not a Facebook person. Too bad. <laughs> Get with the program and understand the consequences of not being on social media as the president of your Rotary Club. The first thing that's going to happen is other people will look like they're the president of the club. We see this right now in clubs right now where the president has no, no presence at all on the club's Facebook page. And he looks like he's absent. It's come to that. So if you're not a Facebook page person, that's cool. But you've got to get somebody else to post for you. You must have a presence. It will hurt you. So that's the second thing. You want to stand up. You want to be physically recognized. You want to be recognized virtually. And I just think it's going to be a good idea for you to start showing up in ways that you haven't shown up until now as a president. I do think that. I do think that. And so uh, we've got to, some ideas together for you because change is in the air, ladies and gentlemen. Change is coming. Change is here if you want it to be here. There are presidents in the room that say to me in the hallway, because I say to them, congratulations on being president. What do you have planned? A number of people have nothing planned. They just look at me and say, well, I, I hadn't really thought about it yet. And I say, well, that's interesting because you're at president-elect training. So that's the first thing. You've got to think about what you want to change. Second thing is you have to think about what's realistic to change. You can't change everything. How many people golf? Nobody. How many people golf? Yeah. What happens when you change too many things about your swing in one session? Ball goes everywhere, right? So you don't want to change too much in the club. You don't want to come in like, a, like some sort of a um, demagogue. Absolutely not. But I do think... I do think you want to be selective about the change. You want to think about something, and you want to make it clear to the club that that's what you want to change. Now, I'm not here to tell you what it is that you should change in your club. You have to kind of come up with that on your own and with your club. But there are people in this room that have things they want to change right now, things that they would change because they've gotten feedback from longtime club members, new club members, and also feedback from visitors. 
That's an interesting bit of feedback, isn't it? How many of you want to have a fun Rotary Club? Raise your hand if you want your club to be fun. Great. Fabulous. That's cool. Who gets to decide what fun is? You? You? Who said you? The president? The club? Does the club get to decide what's fun? Who's the best person to tell you what a fun meeting is? A visitor. The visitor is the person who tells you if it's fun. And if, you know, everybody in the club can say, we're a fun club. If the visitor doesn't say it's fun, you ain't so fun. <laughs> Am I right? So you can keep asking your club if we're a fun club. You can keep practicing what psychologists call confirmation bias. Have you heard of this confirmation bias? Do we have any psychologists in the room? None. It's okay. Maybe, maybe it's all right. Do we have anybody with psychology in the room? Confirmation bias is the idea that as soon as you think you're right about something, you dig in. I'm right. I know I'm right. Let me tell you why I'm right. Right. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Let me convince you to jump to my side because I'm right. That's called confirmation bias. And everybody's subjected to it. Everybody. And so if I think my club is really fun, what I will try to do is I will work overtime to convince you that my club is fun, even if you have a point when you say it's not so fun. Confirmation bias. Everybody has it. Your club has it. You have it. And so the idea is you let other people into that. This is called an open loop, some psychology terms. You're writing stuff down. A closed loop is not good for you. An open loop is good for you. Let me give you an example of a closed loop. I love coming down south. I love coming to Tennessee. I love coming to Nashville. I've been to the Hermitage. I'm a big history fan. I love history, the presidents. The Hermitage, by the way, is Andrew Jackson's um, home, right? Because down south, you name your houses. <laughs> it's a southern thing. Up north, it's just the house. <laughs> down south, it's the hermitage. <laughs> so I can been to the hermitage, and I love history. And George Washington, our first president, they called him the king president because he was like the first club president. You know, they had no club. And he becomes like the first president of America. He's like the club president. And they called him the king president because they were confused to make him a king or a president. They all came from Britain. And they couldn't let go of that old model that, of royalty. So he was kind of a president and kind of the king. They really didn't know what to do. Came up with a manual of procedure, MOP, for the country. And they, uh, they called it something else. But the idea was that they were not going to have a king. They were going to have this president guy. So P George Washington does a pretty good job. As you know, even in his lifetime, he was, you know, he had some detractors, but in the mo for the most part, people like George Washington. He was a good first president. George Washington was on his, uh, he was uh, sick. He was sick. And so they called in the best doctors of the day to treat him. And they treated him in the way that the best way that they knew. It was a concept that, that the people of the day thought was tried and true. It was the best way to save somebody's life. Anybody know what it was called? I didn't sound like anything. It was called bloodletting, bloodletting, gruesome, gruesome. Best technique of the day, but gruesome. The idea would be that if you had bad blood, we'd just let some of that blood out, and then you'll become better. But you see, bloodletting is a closed-loop system, and also it's a very, very linked to confirmation bias because all the people that thought bloodletting worked kept believing that it worked. In fact, here's how it turns out. If we let the blood out of your body and you live... Bloodletting is the miracle cure. <laughs> That's called the closed loop because nothing else helps you get better except bloodletting. You understand? And if we let your blood out of you and you died, you were too sick to save. <laughs> if bloodletting couldn't fix you, nothing could. That's a closed loop, right? And we don't want to practice closed loops. We want to get feedback from people and clubs that work. We want to practice best practices. Not the stuff our club's always done. We want to know what works. And in this weekend, this is how pervasive this problem is. This weekend, smart people, people in this room will stand up in the breakout sessions. And they'll testify of what they do in their club. But they will never tell you a number. They'll say, well, here's what we do in our club. Here's what we do to get members. People will get out their pens and they write everything down, you know. But you'll never tell you how many new members they got. They just tell you what they did to get members. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to do the best stuff. I don't want to just try anything. 
So always ask them, how many members did they get you? It's the number that you want, not the technique. The number, because numbers don't lie. Numbers are not subjected to confirmation bias. A seven is a seven. 